All right, I've got a pretty nice little problem here that I think is good for starting you off with. I really want to go through this and examine each of these things here. Now, these different sections here are things I will grade on your quizzes when I give you a freeform problem. So I'll have sort of targeted problems, but I'll also have these freeform problems for you to play with. So I've got um, different ways to break things down. So up here on the top, we're reviewing the problem, right? We're getting ready to solve it. Here we're solving it, right? That's what the plan and execution are. And here we're checking, all right? Here we're going to check what's happening at the bottom. We're going to check that all of the symbols in the answer, because these are going to be symbolic problems, are given up here or are universal constants. If there's anything extra, then you obviously did something wrong. You need to rework the problem. And the dimensions will check the dimensions of the answer. All right, so that's all stuff that you should be um, comfortable with, right? So we'll just leave it at that and get started. So what I would like you to do is, you know, read your problem and then start filling these things out. Now, to keep to keep this sort of reasonable, because, you know, I can only write so small with this pen on this tablet, um, I'm going to go through the given and the find first. After I'm done with that, I'll um, sort of collate those answers, then come over here to the um, drawing and representation and all that other stuff. And after that, we'll, um, after that, we'll get to actually solving the problem mathematically. So let's see, what are we going to do? You're driving a, on a straight, lonely road that's in the woods at some speed V. It probably should be a capital V. When you see a deer sprinting out into the road, that deer is coming, coming in at a distance about X meters ahead of you and it's going at its own speed u, all right, sort of perpendicular to the road, but it doesn't have to be for this problem. And there's some distance y from the road. And what you want to find is the acceleration, right? You need to, you need to um, accelerate at how fast you have to slow down so to avoid hitting the deer, or basically to stop before hitting the deer, because otherwise we have a very interesting problem, and we don't want you to have that interesting a problem. So here we've got um, givens. Uh, let's see, what are we given? Well, we were given some things about the car, right? The car is going at a speed V. So we've got a car has an initial speed V and an initial um, distance from the place where they hit X. Then you also have um, this deer, which also has a speed and a distance. U and Y. Okay, so those are the things we have. See, I'm. you notice how I'm breaking them up into the physical objects and properties of those of those objects all right um, so that's basically how we start off and then we want to find right uh, the acceleration we want to find the acceleration and we need to label that as well we need to find a variable and that variable is just going to be acceleration we'll call it a a is a good variable for acceleration so now I collect that over here. I've typed it all up previously. And now I want to draw this. I want to make a representation. That representation should go along with the concept. And this equation here goes along with the concept as well. So this is the main concept for the problem that's going to let you solve it. So again, I can only draw this, these things so, um, so large. So I'll draw them in these larger boxes, but they really belong up here. We'll see that one after I go to the next slide. Uh, what sort of concept do we need? Well, this is really a kinematics problem. There's, this doesn't have any physics in it at all. It just has some applied math. So we have kinematics. Oops. 
And the main equation for kinematics that's always good is V bar equals delta x delta t. Okay, the change in position over the change in time. The average speed, the average velocity, excuse me, is equal to the change in position over change in time. Not the average speed, that's a more complicated um, result. So with kinematics, what sort of representation do we have? We're going to have to have some sort of plot for that representation. Okay. So um, remember, we're going to do a plot for that representation. But to really figure out what's going on and represent it, get a good idea about that plot, probably what we're going to want to do is draw this out. So we've got a car. Give it some wheels, because cars have wheels, right? And it's going at a speed v along this line. Then we have a deer, which is another box, but we can give it some antlers, because deer have antlers. Let's give it another couple. There, that looks better. And it has a speed u coming along this other line, and they're going to collide here at this point zero. I'm going to call that the origin, just to make life easy for me. So I'm going to talk about what's going on with this deer, because that deer has a distance y to go down, whereas this car has a distance x to go across. So I'm going to talk about x down here for the car. I'm going to talk about y up here for the deer. And we start at y for the deer, and we start at x. And the critical time for this axis, I'm going to call t. And that's going to be where you just stop as the deer enters the road. Right, where you just stop right there. So you would just barely make push a wind onto the deer. The deer would feel a wind when you stopped. So that's sort of the critical time. If you don't stop fast enough, right, if you don't stop fast enough, then you're going to hit the deer. If you stop too fast, you'll stop earlier on. You'll stop someplace like down here instead, right? Um, so if you st stopped down here, or if you were down here when the time t came along, you would miss the deer. And if you were up here, you'd hit the deer. Okay, so this is the place we care about. Um, so is that it? Did I get them all? Oh, I already got them all. Okay, so that's what we want to do here. So yeah, it is a little weird because the negative axis and the positive axis are different things, but I sort of set up the problem that way so that life would um, be easy, right? So we want to somehow visualize what's actually going on and understand really why we have that critical time. All right, so first thing we need to do is, when we're actually solving this, is plan ahead. So we need to know what we're going to do before we do it. Um, this is a kinematics problem. And like I've said in class, for kinematics we have three different things we're allowed to use. The first one is the one we've written up here. V bar is equal to delta x delta t, the change in position over change in time. So that's the velocity, basically the definition of the average velocity. The average acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time. We're always allowed to use that as well. Um, and then for uniform acceleration, we have the average velocity is equal to the change in the velocity over, or not the change in velocity, excuse me, v1 plus v2, the uh, initial and final velocities divided by 2. Okay, got to remember that, divided by 2. Um, so that'll give us what we need there. If the acceleration is not uniform, then we can't really use that very well. We have to use a is equal to d squared x dt squared, and that has all of kinematics in it. If you understand that, a uh, little bit of calculus, you can do all ki kinematics, in including these three um, equations. Now, remember, the reason why we're staying with these three equations or going over to this one is because we're training ourselves right now to do, go through the problem-solving process. I know your book has a lot of crazy equations that you can just pull out and do things with, all right? But you should be able to work without them. You just need these three things. This is sort of an easy time. If you do shortcuts right now, 
when, you're, when you should be trying to learn how to do this problem solving process, then you will have a lot of problems later on when we're really working out the um, complicated problems using the problem solving process, using forces or energy or whatever it is. Now, so go ahead and use these if you can. I mean, if you can't, when you're doing the regular homework, that's fine. But when we're doing things on quizzes and tests, you're only allowed to use these three equations and, you know, vector stuff and, uh, you know, similar equations in the y direction or for rotational kinematics and stuff like that. But these three are the three kinematic equations. Don't use any of those other special case ones. You should be able to apply these to whatever case comes up. And that's what I really want to see, is that you can do the problem solving, right? I want you to, I want to see your problem solving. I don't care about how many equations you can memorize or how many equations you can write in your notes or anything like that. Okay, that's really high school stuff. So now we need our plan. So one, uh, we need to define acceleration. We use that defi definition of acceleration. to find A, right? So we already know what A is, and we want to use that definition. Here we'll just substitute things in, or we want to know what A is, that's what we have. Uh, we have, that is delta V over delta T, okay? So uh, the final time is going to be T, that little T, the one we were talking about right here. That's a dummy variable, we're not given, it has to disappear at some point. We don't know what it is, uh, minus zero, and that acceleration brings is supposed to bring you to a velocity of zero right there, right? You want to go to a velocity of zero uh, minus v, okay? Because that's your initial um, speed right there. So zero minus v divided by t minus zero, that's your definition of acceleration. Um, now we need to do something to find that t, right? If the thing we need to do there is look at this line, right? We can use this line and your definition of average velocity. So we define velocity. Use that definition of velocity here um, to find the speed of the deer. So we have minus u because it's going negative, going down. This way it's negative um, speed. That's going to be the change in the uh, position so that's zero is final minus uh, this was y capital y here right and then we have little t minus zero so little t is what we want y we have u we have so we're okay actually we should have mentioned that we have the v so we're good with everything we don't have any leftover question marks if we don't have any leftover question marks we have enough equations to actually solve the problem so we're using these two concepts to figure out how to do things. Now, for a vector problem, you might have to use each one of these three um, twice, That's, or each one of these thing, three twice to get the problem. That's possible, but not in this particular case. In this one, we just need to do one thing for the car and one thing for the deer. And that's why I said you want to get to your speed zero before that time t. All right, now we need to execute. All right, so... We need um, number A. Uh, that is going to be to substitute T from 2 into 1. Okay, so that's the mathematical step we're going to do. Here we're just going to talk about the mathematical step, whatever it is that we're going to do. So we have A is equal to minus V over T. You have to substitute this t, which is um, y over u. So we have minus v over y over u, which is equal to minus uv over y. Okay, and so that's my answer right there. So minus uv over y is my answer. Now, if that's my answer, now I want to check that answer, right? So, uh, first thing is, 
First thing is check these symbols, all right? We've got this is my um, answer. I've got U, is U up here? So U is the deer's speed, we're given that, so that goes there. V, right there. Is V up here? Yes, so it's a given, right? Y, is Y up here? Y is up there. And you notice we didn't have to use X. That's okay, I'm going to give you problems where you don't have to use everything because that's part of your problem solving skills, right, is to recognize that. Also, we don't have any universal constants. We didn't have to use anything about gravity. We didn't have to use any materials constants like the density of water or the lattice spacing of iron or anything like that. Um, so we didn't have anything there. That's perfectly fine, right? That's okay not to have anything there. So we're okay. That's all good. We don't have anything extra. So now we need to check the dimensions. Okay, so the first thing is we have to find what we want. What do we want as far as dimensions? Well, what are the dimensions of the acceleration? That's meters per second. Meters is a unit of length, and seconds are a unit of time. So that's actually meters per second squared, LT to the minus 2. That's what we want. We want the units of this thing that we're supposed to find. What do we have? Have is the, the dimensions of that answer. All right, so to do that, we have to work all that out, right? So we say, okay, what are my dimensions for uv over y, right? Okay, that means I have the dimensions of u times dimensions of v times the dimensions of y to the minus 1, okay? Because minus 1 because this is divided by y. So what are the dimensions of u? u is a speed. Uh, speed has meters per second, so that's lt to the minus 1. v is also a speed, so that's lt to the minus 1. And you should have these in your notebook, and you should um, know what they are. For everything that we see, you should know what the, un what the dimensions are. That's sort of one of the jobs that you have in this class. And then y, that's l, and that's to the minus 1, so L to the minus 1. So we have L squared, L to the minus 1, so that's just L. And T to the minus 1 times T to the minus 1 is T to the minus 2. So here we have L T to the minus 2, and that works out. Everything worked out. We did well. That is a good problem, okay? So to remind you what we did, first we went through and we figured out what was going on in the problem. Before we started solving things, we figured out what was going on in the problem. Uh, we talked about what was given. First, we broke these things up into how, um, you know, what object was what. We had um, the qualities that we, we know for each one of those objects. In this case, we had velocity and distance velocity and distance. So we have a name and a symbol. You need to have both of those, otherwise I take points off. That I mean, it's simple, right? A name and a symbol. We also need to know what the objects are, right? Think of this as a key to your answer. So if I look at your answer, no matter what you choose as the variables, I should be able to figure out what those are. So you should be able to choose strange variables, write them up in here as given, and you know you can call them anything you want, and I should be able to figure it out just by looking at this key. Okay, That's what you're doing. You're communicating with me what are the names of the variables you're using in this problem. In this problem, you were given the names, right? At some point, I might not give you the names, and you have to decide what to name them. And then you have to tell me what you have named them. Because that's all symbols are, are names. And those symbols stand for properties of objects and um, relationships between objects and things like that. We also did the same thing for the acceleration, a name and a symbol. We um, found a concept that went, went along with how we're going to solve this. Um, and both the equation and the representation go along with the concept. You should have a, you should have a representation, in this case, because it's kinematics, a plot that in some way talks about the, com the concept that you're dealing with. 
that equation should be a concept that you'll probably, or should be a equation that goes along with the concept that you'll probably use in the plan. All right. We need a physical drawing, um, a little sketch for how you do things. A lot of times, even though I didn't do this really in that order, a lot of times you probably want to do the drawing as you're doing your givens and your things like that. It's just, um, I need space while I'm doing this, otherwise I probably would have done it that way. Okay, so after you've got all this stuff, you've got a pretty good idea about what's going on, and now you can refer back to that while you're doing your plan. This plan, we start off with the variable here that you're targeting in your find statement up here. We want the acceleration. The acceleration has to be in your first um, equation. So you need a concept that goes along with it. The time is the thing we didn't know. Each equation after the first one should include one of the things that you don't know from the previous equations. So anything you don't know. If you keep on doing that, you'll run out of things you don't know, and then you'll know you'll be able to get the answer. Okay, as long as everything you've done is valid. As long as as long as everything you do as long as everything that you're doing applies to the problem. Okay. So when we come here, we want we don't know what the t is, so we start with that t, and we have this equation that relates t to um, this this t to that t to the properties of the deer. So we have the we have a car equation and we have a deer equation, and we put them together by looking at the t. And when we formally do that over here, we label it again because we might need because we might need to talk about that later on. Um, but we just explain what we're doing. We're substitute, substituting this one two into one. So you know I've just written one without the zero. And then I substituted a t from 2 down here in here, and then I just finished up the math. This is not an incredibly difficult problem. You should be perfectly happy with it. Then I checked the answer, right? The symbols here have to match the symbols up here or be universal constants. So g could be in there. Density of water could be in there. Like I said, they're not here in this particular problem. We've got lots of problems. They'll show up. Then we want to ch check our dimensions. Whatever our answer for A is, because of dimensional homogeneity, whatever is here has to match whatever is here as far as the dimensions are concerned. Right? It's dimensional homogeneity. Uh, we use this to check the problems here. As you go on in higher level courses, you'll want to keep track of that all the time. This is going to tell you where errors showed up. Okay, This is very important. You can also use this for modeling. We talked a little bit about that in class. We're not going to do too much modeling here in this semester. We might, If this is a later semester, we might do more of it. Uh, I haven't really decided. But for this semester, we won't do too much with dimensional modeling, but we'll do We'll test the dimensional homogeneity all the time till the end of the class, and you're sitting there on the final. You're going to have problems like this all the time. Not just here. I'm going to give you um, random problems with a solution. I'm going to tell, ask you to tell me whether or not it's a viable solution or not. I'm not going to ask you whether it's right. I'm going to ask you whether it's viable, right? Um, does it have the right symbols, right? Does it have any extra symbols? It's out. Um, does it have the right dimensions? Does it have the wrong dimensions? It's out. And you'll have to add, tell me something about the limits or whether or not it's got reasonable dependences, right? If, you know, you have more weight, does that mean the spring stretches more or something like that? So you should have some sort of physical idea about what's going on in all sorts of situations. So hopefully this will be a sufficient introduction 
to the problem solving process and give you some um, idea about what we're really looking for when we're doing kinematics problems. If this is a little confusing, well, give it a little bit of time and work on it. You should, whenever you have any problems with your web assignment homework, go back to something like this. This is a systematic way to approach things. A lot of times when you get to the more complicated problems, even the more complicated numerical problems, shoving numbers into a into the problem don't necessarily help you. All right, so go back to this sort of problem solving system whenever you have problems. A lot of the problems will be this easier, a few of them are even easier. So, you know, for those you don't really have to worry too much about them. But for the more complicated numerical problems, you'll still probably want to come back to this a few times. I can tell that already by looking at your web assignment homework. So if you have any questions, just talk to me in class or in my office hours. That'll be great. But uh, I hope this has helped you, helped you so far.